a minute. I think I have to drop. I think I have to drop this as usual. Bring everything down to my level. Um, uh, yeah, uh, I couldn't decide, dumb Samaritan or dumb Quixote. As usual, Charles is very indulgent. Uh, he says I'm not so dumb, and I should retitle the story. I think you should hear the story, and you can decide quite how dumb you think I am. Uh, when I look at my watch, I see that it's the 23rd of September, uh, which means that uh, in two days' time, it'll be the annual, it'll be the anniversary. 18, 18 years ago, I came to Japan for a year. And uh, I got a, got a room in a gaijin house down at Kujo Kawadamachi that everybody called the last resort by a flyover. The walls used to shake and there was a big Yakuza house next door which was quite exciting to go to the Sento and Bita asked, Konewa, and I'd say, Ikirisu, and, mm. and that would be the, the short conversations by which I learned Japanese. Um, I, so I'd been in Japan for uh, one, two, three, just over three months, and uh, I woke up um, early in the wee hours, and uh, as I said, a lot of heavy trucks used to go past the house, they had flimsy walls, so the walls used to shake a lot, but this time the walls were really shaking, and the floor was jumping, and a shampoo bottle fell on my head and I realized that this was an earthquake unlike anyone that I'd ever experienced before. And since we don't have earthquakes in England, and this was quite big, I assumed this must be the epicenter of the earthquake. Wow, this is a very powerful earthquake, and all the Namagaijin in the Gaijin house got up, and we had a big conference. Wow, are you okay? Are you okay? And it finally stopped, and we thought, do you think this is the epicenter? Do you think it's the epicenter? It must be, it must be, surely, you know. If it isn't, and after a while, you know, somebody said, why don't we turn on the TV, you know, and let's see what's going on. So we turned on the TV and, um, well, it takes a lot to reduce a bunch of 20-something Namagaijin to complete silence. But what we saw on the TV did reduce us to complete silence. We were not the epicenter of the earthquake, not by a long shot. And um, as many of you I look around the room, I see, I know a lot of people were here at the time, um, reading the newspaper uh, as the days went by during that week following the quake, um, there was a lot of talk about how the authorities were not springing into action quite like they should have been. Uh, well, that's what I was reading uh, anyway. Um, I didn't really know. Uh, I'm reading the newspaper. That's what it says. And uh, actually, there was a lot more going on than I knew, because I didn't know anybody or anything. And if I'd really wanted to get involved, I probably could have, probably could have reached out and found somebody. But as it was, I was locked into my own way of thinking. And I thought, it says in the newspaper, nobody is helping Kobe. I will. I will help Kobe. What do you need? You need water and food. What's that stuff the salarymen eat? Calorie mate. I know what I'll do. I'm going to fill up a big backpack with the word mineral water and calorie mate. I'll go to Kobe. I'll give it out. I'm going to save Kobe. So I filled up my backpack, but of course I hadn't been to Kobe, I don't know about it, I don't speak very much Japanese, and uh, I f in the newspaper said, Sanomia, Sanomia was wrecked. So, well, I'm, I'll go to Sanomia. How do you get there? You get on the Hankyu line. I, All right, well, I'll, I'll get on, the, and you change at Juso. I'll change at Juso. It didn't occur to me that if, if Sanomia is so wrecked, maybe the train line didn't run perfectly all the way to Sanomia anymore. I, it, it's amazing how every step I didn't think beyond my backpack of calorie mate and, and mineral water <laughs> with which I was going to save Kobe. Uh, so I, got, I changed at Juso and then the train kept on going and uh, then we were all told, please get off the train. You know, this is as far as it goes. Oh, where are we? Uh, it's, it's, it's a place called Nishinomiya. I said, well, okay, well, no problem. Uh, I want to go to Sanomiya. This is Nishinomiya. I'm obviously already in the Nomiya district. Uh, I'll, just, I'll just walk down the road to the next. And there was a bus, and I thought, wimps and losers, you know? Come on, you know? So I, 
I ignored the bus and just kept on walking. And, uh, and a guy pulled over, where are you going? I said, I'm going to Sanomia. He said, get in. I said, no, 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 no. He said, please, no, get in. I said, very far, very far. And I thought, they all say that, you know, no problem. So I, I, I walked from Nishinomiya to Sanomia with, with my calorie mate and water. And uh, of course, as I got, the closer and closer I got, the more the scenery began to change and become very, very disturbing and, and very tragic and um, there were a lot of helicopters flying overhead and I saw a lot of army vehicles and uh, as I saw the army vehicles go by I thought oh um, clearly there's something going on other people you know apart from me um, <laughs> and uh, I finally I, I arrived in Sanomia and um, I thought well here I am and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give out my stuff and I looked around and uh, looking for people to give it to and you know and I saw some people gathered I thought good I'll go and give it to them you know so I went over and uh, they were gathered because it was a distribution point for food and clothes and various daily necessities so I, I went over and I thought oh well they don't need it probably so I, I'll wander around a bit more and Every time I saw a group of people, I thought, well, oh, I'll give it to them. And they were, I went around, and sure enough, it was another distribution point. And uh, I started to realize um, quite how dumb uh, I was and quite how incredibly vain uh, I was. Uh, there was a lot going on. Uh, there was a lot of stuff being given out. Uh, better food than calorie mate. And uh, my entire venture was completely vanity-driven and ridiculous. And uh, as I stopped and started to think about this, uh, I started to become more and more depressed and very quickly became consumed with self-loathing. And uh, I looked over and I saw uh, four or five people sitting across a, a road and they were sitting around, they had a little kind of a, they, were, they had a pot and a camping stove and they were making something or other. And they were sitting around this camping stove, sort of slumped, not talking. And uh, I suddenly sort of felt ridiculous, extra ridiculous. And I myself just sat down on the curb, slumped and thought, what an idiot. What was I thinking? And... Uh, I heard a voice and I looked up and the people over the road were, were shouting and they were waving, signaling at me to come over. And I thought, well, is it me? You look behind you, that one, you know. And the, it really, they really want, it, is, it really is me. And I said, I thought, oh, okay, well, good, finally. Okay, I'm gonna give it all to them. Good, and give it all to them and then I'm gonna fly, walk back to Nishinomiya and go home. So I, I walked across, but I've, I've got, you know, o genki desu ka genki desu, you know, level Japanese. So I'm thinking about how can I explain this to them. So I get across and uh, I'm, I'm trying to think what to say. And then a man, one of them stands up and he puts his hand on his, my shoulder and he says, Daijobu desu. Kanpate kudasai. And I looked at him and I thought, why? What? <laughs> And he said it again, and then one by one, everybody around this big pot stood up and patted me on the shoulder and said, Daijobu desu, ganbate kudasai. And then somebody said, skinship, gaijin wa skinship de ne, you know. And then they all started patting me, and then they, while I stood there, unable to speak, they gathered around me, and they gave me a great big group hug. <laughs> and they comforted me and consoled me. And they told me repeatedly, Daijobudas. <laughs> and I couldn't say to them, Oh Daijobudas, I'm going back to Kujo Kawaramachi in the next hour. And 
I was just, I, I, even, I didn't even have the Japanese, and even if I had the Japanese, I didn't, I, how can you, how can you say that? <laughs> and the more, as the, the more they comforted me, the more, the more humiliated I felt. And the more humiliated I felt, the more, I sort of did this kind of body language, the body language of despair. <laughs> and they thought I was losing hope and they comforted me more <laughs> and more. And they gave me some soup <laughs> and some mochi. And <laughs> it was awful. <laughs> and I just couldn't. <laughs> See how about calorie mate for dessert? And, <laughs> and they were so animated, you know, they were they seemed to be having a really great time comforting me. And and in the end I thought I can't I can't say anything other than arigato. So in the end I, I just said arigato and gambari mas. And I walked away in a random direction and and and, and now that I was away from all the comfort I really went into fifth gear with the self-loathing and I just oh god I hate myself so much and um, I, I, I came to Kobe to give to these people I don't give them anything. They're just giving to me. And um, uh, it was a long walk home. And on, of course, man being a vain creature and me being a, a very vain creature, I started to try to find some way of rationalizing the whole situation to myself. And um, I, I couldn't help but remember that when I first saw them, they were all sitting sort of slumped on the ground and I couldn't help but remember that when they found someone who they thought was also uh, in distress how very animated and bright they were and uh, although maybe it really is just vanity speaking I couldn't help but wonder maybe if by just complete accident. Although I thought I hadn't come to Kobe, I thought I hadn't helped anyone at all. Maybe by accident I had ended up giving something to someone. That's my story. <laughs>